here we are here today speaking about freedom. You know, in the United States and around the world, the month of July is a month for freedom, usually, or where we celebrate freedom. We in the United States of America celebrate the 4th of July. And in France, they celebrate Bastille Day. And so it's a month that it's, it's, a, it's about freedom, embracing it, owning it, knowing it, uh, accepting it, and all those sorts of things. So embracing freedom. And the title that came through me is being your own abolitionist. So before we get into what that means, and I understand that it's very, it's, it's a lot of mm, creativity that we may not automatically put in our spiritual practices or in our faith philosophies. However, it's what the spirit sent through me. So we know it is divinely given. However, I always like to start with a little giggle, a little joke, a little something to, to remind myself that this being spiritual and mystical and, and enlarging into the spaciousness of the divine can also be fun. It can be fun. It can be zany. It can be silly. And so here we go with a little joke. So there was a woman whose husband was making his transition. And as he was making his transition, he said to her, Promise me that the million dollars we have in reserve in the bank, when I make my transition, you'll send that along with me. It'll be, it, it will go with me. And she said, oh, yes, of course, dear. Yes. So he made his transition. They're at the memorial service or the funeral, whichever you'd like to call it. And one of her dear friends says to her, her friends knew about this. And her friend says, um, did you really put the million dollars you have in reserve to go with him? Like, did you, he didn't get cremated. He was in a coffin. Did you really put it in there? And the wife says, yes, absolutely. I did. And the friend says, I cannot believe you do something like this. And the wife says, it's okay. I wrote a check. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we can be silly and we can have fun and just have a good giggle and a good chuckle about all things spiritual, because it's not just seriousness when it comes to spirit. So this uh, being your own abolitionist, I'd like to start us out with a couple of definitions because that gets all of us on the same page, so to speak. And I'd like to also say before I even go on, thank you for coming to co-create today. Thank you for coming to have a play date in spirit because none of this, the music, the announcements, the meditation, David's wonderful presence and his spiritual leadership, none of it can happen without all of us here together co-creating. Even what I'm saying, it's all a co-creation of the divine. So thanks for coming to co-create today. So these definitions, what is abolition? I looked it up. Abolition is an annulment, an abrogation. An abrogation means to repeal or put and into um, abolition, as we probably all know, is ending slavery. And so if you're an abolitionist, you're one who practices that. So now let's talk about slavery. You're probably thinking, well, what's slavery got to do with us, Reverend Verona? It's, you know, like hundreds of years since the Emancipation Proclamation. However, we'll get into that. But slavery, the definition that I found for slavery is bondage, servitude, or forced endeavors of. All right, so now let's just allow ourselves to take a breath and think, okay, where could slavery fit into my life? Where could slavery fit into my life at all? And what showed up for me is we can be a slave to certain ideas, beliefs, or understandings. I can be a slave to doubt. I can be a slave to anxiety. I can be a slave to a belief in lack. I can be a slave to all of the race consciousness or the group consciousness that's swirling around the world. And sometimes, and by that, I mean a lot of the opinions, we might say, or perspectives that are swirling around the planet. I can be a slave to that. You know, I mean, when we when I open my iPad, when I open my computer, when I open my phone, even some things show up. Or if when I open the almighty Google to look up and see how to make a recipe or something, um, some some things show up. So what I'm saying is we can be a slave to all sorts of things like that, the group or race consciousness. I can also be a slave to shame and blame. I can be a slave to unkindness. I can be a slave to the big one for me, judgment. There's all sorts of things that we can be a slave to, you know, and we may not even think that we're being a slave to it. However, it might have a predominant part in our thoughts, in our, our statements, in the way we speak. Think of the way we use our words, the way we speak. Th these sorts of things may just, we may be, have a slave to some of these things. Like one example that I can use is one big one for me is judgment. And it's because I judge myself a lot. I accept that. And so like for me, it might be, 
if let's say, oh, just yesterday, one of my favorite glasses, I broke it. I was taking it out of the glass rack and I hit it against the cupboard and I broke it. And I, if I was a slave to judgment, I could have said to myself, what made you do that, Verona? Why would you do that? This is one of your favorite glasses. Now, what I actually really said was, whoa, look at that. I didn't know it was going to break that easily. However, <laughs> see what I'm getting to? I, like, I could have been a slave to the judgment that sometimes has a prevalent part of my life, that sometimes is a prevalent part of me. And I'm using myself as an example. And because we are these luscious, delectable spiritual beings having a human experience, it can happen for any of us. We can be a slave to any of these sorts of beliefs or qualities or thoughts or emotions. I can be a slave to my emotions too. I can be a slave to all sorts of things. So let's talk about a story of slavery. And I'm not going to talk about Harriet Tubman or anything like that, which you maybe would think I would. However, let's talk about a story about modern day slavery. And this is about a young woman named Luz Mila. And Luz Mila, Luz Mila is 16 year, years old now, but when she was 12, she's South American. When she was 12, she was sent from her family home to be a domestic worker in Peru. So she got to the place where she was being in Peru and really the place that she was working, her employer really had her in slavery, what we would know to be slavery. The employer worked her seven days a week with no time off. The employer insisted on her converting to Catholicism the employer also cut her hair against her will, and the employer generally abused her. Now, that's what I would call slavery because before this definition of slavery that I had here was bondage, servitude, forced endeavors of. So I, that's what I would say was happening to Luz Mila. However, part of her being a domestic worker in this home in Peru, she got to attend evening classes. And the evening classes were to make her better at being a domestic worker, actually. It wasn't like, oh, wow, you can better yourself. You could do something else. It was to be of more use to her employer. However, at these evening classes, she found a um, project, a company called La Casa de, de Panchita. La Casa de Panchita. And at La Casa de Panchita, it was a project working with domestic workers, helping domestic workers, getting the highest and the best for domestic workers. There, she actually was able to open herself up to talking about the slavery that she was a part of as a domestic worker, that she was actually being made to be. She also found out and got the strength and the confidence there to leave her employer. She got a new job. And now at age 16 in four short years, she's become a leader of her co-workers, sharing insights about their rights, about their abilities and all sorts of things like that. So, and Luz Mila, her mantra, what we would call her affirmation is, if you love yourself, do not let them mistreat you. If you love yourself, do not let them mistreat you. So Luz Mila, here she was stuck in what we might call, I, I'm calling, I don't know if you would call it, but I'm calling slavery. And it's quite similar to if we are stuck in doubt, anxiety, a belief in lack, shame and blame, judgment, uh, race consciousness, unkindness, all sorts of things like that, because she was stuck physically in it. We can be stuck emotionally and, and we can be stuck in our heart and soul in it. You know, uh, and this is something that I so admire. One of the parts of slavery one might be in is lack of self-confidence. You know, you might be slaving, you might be a slave to not believing in yourself. All sorts of things. You know, I, I can be a slave to all sorts of things. And Luz Mila actually was in those things and she figured out a way to get out. Now, part of the commonality between Luz Mila, I believe, and us being our own in our own forms of slavery is fear. Fear, 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 fear. And I admit it, I'm gonna be transparent. Sometimes fear has got a hold of me and it's whipping me around. Fear has got a hold of me and it's taking me places I wouldn't ever think I'm going. Fear has got a hold of me and I cannot put on the brakes. I admit that sometimes in all transparency, not all the time, but it does happen. And I admit it because in my humanness, I know that it's it's something that could happen. So fear is known as, we all know this one, false evidence appearing real. Fear is known as false evidence appearing real. So this false evidence appearing real in our lives, could there be an antidote for it? What do you think? 
I know there's an antidote for it. And the antidote for it is love, 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 love. The antidote for it is love. And I was so happy, Laura, you sang that song because it was get ready, my soul. I'm diving in. Yeah. I'm going into the font of that which I came from. Love, 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 love. So there is a... um. I, I was there was a quote that I got from that was reading in a book and uh, this book was saying and the truth of it is is that um, God helps those who help themselves. We all know that one probably. My grandmother taught me that one, so we probably all heard it from someone who was an elder. God helps those who help themselves. However, there is an even more lighthearted uh, philosophy a pr approach. It's an African proverb, and this African proverb, you might know it. It says, "God will not drive flies away from a tailless cow." And what the heck does that mean? A tailless cow, we all know tailless cows and we know when we ourselves are being a tailless cow, someone who looks outside of themselves for solutions and never takes responsibility. <laughs> yeah, we might be a tailless cow. So if we think of this a tailless cow and allow ourselves to steep in the font of love that's already within us, you know, when we see fountains that are, are um. Re, uh, replenishing that the water that's in the fountain it goes in and comes back out that's us that's us there's love that's what's happening with us in love and so if we allow ourselves to be that to embrace love to be love to embody love to be in love with love to know the love that's within us then it said then it could be said that god we said that about god will not drive away flies from a tailless cow however when we learn to consistently trust support and love ourselves. Our tails lengthen and some flies that have persistently pestered us become discouraged and disappear. That is to say some of those beliefs that have been flies in our lives that are buzz, <laughs> buzzing around and, and absolutely pestering us or bringing us off course out of alignment of what is the truth of what we are. So there are some steps that we can take for this because I love, love, love the um, intellectual and the heart connection, you know, those 13, that just that 13 inches between of learning uh, to step into the spaciousness of the divine. However, because I'm having a human experience, I also like to have steps. I like to have steps to put in my toolbox, on my tool uh, belt, in my tool case, whatever. So some steps showed up for me. And it's so wonderful because these steps are easily accessible by all of us. They're manageable. And they're completely uncomplicated. So I call these steps the three Bs. And these three Bs, I want to be transparent and say, I learned them from uh, reading Can You Talk to God by Ernest Holmes. Okay, they're in there. And so the three Bs are believe absolutely, be convinced, and be receptive. So let's go back a little to them. So be believe absolutely. What does this mean? Believe absolutely. What I think it means and what has come for me is accept the highest and best blessings in all and as all of all. Accept the highest and best blessings. I don't know if I told you the story before, but earlier this year, I was driving along my tire pressure light came on and I thought, okay, all right. I stopped at my favorite gas station by my house and I said, well, my tire pressure light is on. What does that mean? Do I just put some air in? And so the mechanic there looked at it and he said, oh girl, no, you don't just put some air in. You need all new tires. <laughs> you need four new tires. At that time I was getting ready to embark upon, and you know about this, my wonderful trip to Africa. And I thought, this is not what I need at this time to buy four tires before I'm going to Africa. Not That is not to say that source and supply is not limitless in my life. It is. I just hadn't planned on it, okay? <laughs> I'm going to be honest. However, what really was the po most powerful and best thing about it in accepting the highest and best blessings in it all, I, I was getting the tires from Costco. They said they had no appointments. I just allowed myself to be with it. I called back and they said, oh, we had a cancellation. You can get in, you can get new tires and we're gonna give you a discount. The day before I was getting on the airplane to leave for Africa. I mean, this was like believing absolutely. I allowed myself to believe absolutely and to know the highest and best blessings in everything. The second one, be convinced. And the being convinced is to claim it and name it. Claim it and name it. You know, in Science of Mind, uh, Spiritual Mind Treatment, there's a part that 
there's called, um, there's something called different sort of treatment. And in the different sort of treatment, it's where you demand of the universe. You demand it of the universe. You don't just say, I accept it, I affirm it, I call it forth, I claim it. No, you demand a demonstration of the universe. And that is what I'm calling be convinced. Claim it and name it and know that you're claiming and naming the end. And the means to the end has nothing to do with us. The means to the end is the H-O-W, the how of spirit. The means to the end is already happening. The minute I claim it and name it and demand it of the universe, the means to the end is already getting its act together and, and gestating and, and bursting forth and making itself known. So this is the second one. And the third one, which I said was be receptive. And the be receptive is opening the floodgates from within for the magnetism of all that is. Because as Reverend Michael says, we don't come here to get, we come here to let. Yeah, think about it. We don't come here to get. I love that. We come here to let. So opening the floodgates from within, sometimes I might think, well, I can, if the floodgates would just, if you just open the floodgates, spirit, I could have everything. Well, we already have everything. Opening the floodgates from within our heart and soul to allow the magnetism of all that is, the abundance of all life, for through and as us. So as we use the three Bs, believe absolutely, be convinced, be receptive. Now we can take a different attitude, a different perspective on that word F-E-A-R. Instead of it being false evidence appearing real, we can say that we are feeling eager and ready. Yeah, eager and ready, yeah. So that that word now becomes our ally, our tool, our, um, I don't know, like our vacuum cleaner in, 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 in hoovering up all that no longer serves us. We can actually absolutely use it that way. And while I was being with this, a Bible verse showed up and it was in the book of Galatians chapter five, verse one. And it says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened by the yoke of slavery. Ooh, powerful, yes, powerful. And we can allow ourselves to know that is for freedom that Christ has set us free. It's the Christ consciousness within us. It's the Christ within us. It's within all of us. That, that, place, that place and space of the myriad and the multitudinous of possibilities. Yeah, so that we can allow ourselves to be not burdened but unburden the yoke of slavery. So all of this sounds really great. I know it does. It does to me and you're probably, whoa, okay, okay, okay. I can't wait to use this in my life. And so I'd like to tell you how it's showing up in my life. It's shown up a lot of ways in my life. However, one of the ways it showed up in my life quite recently is since I've come back from Kenya, you, I talked to you, it was with you shortly after I came back. I have come to know that there is more for me to be in life. I have come to know that there's more for me, ways for me to spread out in life. I have come to know something I always knew my whole life, that mine is a global gift, that mine is to give internationally, to be all over the world, to be all over the globe, and not just stay in one little nice comfy niche. That, <laughs> that's easy to get into. That's easy to stay in. So I've been being with it, listening to my intuitive, doing intuitive listening, and, be, and allowing myself to use the three Bs unbeknownst to me, not formally, but when these showed up for me, I thought, that's what I've been doing, Spirit. Thank you. It's already been in me. Believing absolutely, being convinced, and being receptive. So I started believing absolutely the highest and best blessings for me. That is to say, where else are, are you going to use me, Spirit? Where else? Where In whatever ways am I going to be doing things? And as you all know, one of the ways that showed up is I get to, your wonderful spiritual director is having me speak at his other gig his other job his other center in san francisco showed up that was one of the things that showed up being convinced i was claiming and naming i have been claiming and naming that i am a global speaker that i am a global share i share globally and that all sorts of things are happening to me globally okay so besides kenya i now have found that through some other connections that i didn't even think were going to show up i'm going to be doing some speaking in nigeria so speaking in Nigeria, which I've never even been to, I'm so excited. Okay, that's what showed up for me. And then being receptive, just opening up the floodgates for myself, just opening up those floodgates. Another friend of mine, minister, called me to say, you know, you've been speaking at our center. We would like you to give us some online content. 
we would like you to give your Abundance Adventure Play Shop, which is something I do, a 21-day play shop. We would like you to give it to us so that our congregants can go on our website, say, look at a picture of you and say, oh, we remember when Reverend Barona was here and spoke with us and did a workshop. I'd like more. So they can just hit that and then they can get the whole vast array of what it is I have to offer, which is the love of my life. Speaking about prosperity and abundance, that's what that's that's part of my purpose here because it's taken me um, a good amount of time to understand that I am an instrument of source and supply and that source and supply loves itself as me and is within me as me and all around me. And I'll talk another time with you about how I have been down the road of credit card debt to the tune of $40,000 to the wonderful store Nordstrom's and had no idea what I got and don't didn't have any idea how I was going to pay it. However, this is the other thing that's now shown up for me is that my wonderful friend, it's Reverend Cindy Edelson, said to me, we need some online content from you. Come on, girl, get it together. Send it over. So I realized that listening to my inner voice and really knowing there was something greater and grander and more out there for me by using the three Bs, believing, absolutely, being convinced and being receptive that all these things are showing up. And I didn't call them in exactly in that way because part of this thing of being our own abolitionist is knowing that the highest and best shows up in spirit's way. It does. It may not show up as we're outlining spirit, like, okay, spirit, here's what I want. I want a new Lamborghini. I want this. I want that. No, no, no. It shows up in spirit's way and it always shows up something greater and better and more fluid and more juicy than we could have possibly imagined. Because that is what spirit is within, through, and as us. The, the infinitude of the givingness of the divine. So I want to sing a little song for you because it's about freedom. Uh, and, and it's just a little short one. And I'm not a singer, okay? <laughs> I'm a speaker. But this is about freedom. And it's about freedom. I want to explain to you, freedom begins within and as each one of us. Anything, any freedoms that we have, it's about us being our own abolitionist. You know, Staying in a place of, instead of false evidence appearing real, being in a place of feeling eager, ready, and in a space and place of infinite love. So this is a song by Sweet Honey in the Rock. Just going to sing a little. Here's how it goes. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes and it can come in through and as each one of us right here right now blessings i'm complete hmm. life. I love this feeling. I stepped into a knowing that's always been. There's nothing greater or more beautiful to be this
I am yours, I am yours. 